Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion uh, on composite polymer matrix composite processing methods. Uh, we talked about wet layup. We talked about vacuum bagging earlier. Uh, we'll have a, a vacuum bagging uh, cyber lab here, uh, if not this video, the next one for sure. But at any rate, um, let's get started with the uh, filament winding process here. Uh, again, you've seen schematic of this from the slides that I sent you <clears throat> last week and then also from that little short video uh, that I sent you. So um, it's pretty straightforward. It all, so to speak, rotates around uh, what they call a mandrel. That's the, the basic die shape here. And of course, most of these, they don't have to be, but most of them are, are, are cylindrical uh, with a circular cross section, but there are many obviously squares and other types of profile shapes, uh, rectangular, uh, square, like I said, uh, even triangular. Cross sections do make all kinds of different, um, well, they go from, from making things like pressure vessels uh, this way, tanks, also um, booms. Booms for these lift trucks, uh, special lift trucks that work around electrical wires, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, since it's non-conductive. Uh, and they can range anywhere from, you know, maybe as short as 8 to 10 feet, all the way up to maybe 20 feet uh, in length. And then depending upon what they're doing, you know, they could uh, be uh, maybe 3 feet to maybe 10 feet in diameter. So it just kind of depends. It's a very versatile uh, process. But here is the basic... Um, schematic of how this runs. There's obviously a driving machine, kind of like a lathe, uh, turning this mandrel here. And then what you don't see is all of the, uh, the uh, twisted yarns that are coming off and being fed through this little, uh, this little ferrule, I guess you might call it. And it runs through here. And then as this thing is turning, this is going up and down this bed back and forth, left to right, left to right. And it's making it very nice, uh, very helical type of uh, arrangement, uh, kind of like on an open reel, fishing, fishing uh, reel. Uh, but at any rate, so, uh, and it just ke keeps doing it. Uh, and what you're not seeing is, is that all of these uh, yarns, these twisted yarns, are going through a bath, sort of a, a wet bath, of all of the, um, usually an epoxy uh, resin. So it's wet, and so it goes through here, and then it, and then it gets put upon this as it turns and goes up and back and forth, back and forth. So um, again, it's a filament winding process, and this picture in our book kind of is a little bit better to kind of show you what it looks like again. Uh, here is a continuous uh, roving or yarns, and they go through a series of pulleys and down into this resin bath, and then back up, and then this carriage Again, just like on the lathe, it goes back and forth, back and forth as this thing is spinning. So, and, and it's using the mandrel uh, is the uh, die for that uh, process. And again, here is uh, one uh, example of like a tank or something here. And then there's another picture right here of a tank being produced that way. Uh, and so the mandrel... This mandrel can either be solid or it can be like a, a rubber bladder. It can be blown up and then deflated uh, and pulled out. And if it's solid, then they just let this thing cure. And then there's a, a, a large hydraulic ram that would then push this mandrel out of the, uh, of the formed um, filament winded product. So really, really good product. Lots of good uses and uh, widely used. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, let me make sure I got this lined up okay on the camera. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we call resin resin transfer molding, or RTM for short, resin transfer molding. Um, and this is a uh, product that's very unique in its operation. It kind of combines uh, the world of compression molding along with injection molding. Because what you have here are two dies, um, a two section die. Here's a top half and a bottom half. Uh, and then in between here, this little section all throughout here, this is the actual part that's going to be. And it's usually uh, a big thick mat 
of some sort of reinforcing fabric um, in, in sort of a thick mat kind of form or it could even actually be a preform uh, that gets kind of pressed uh, into the basic shape and then gets put into this into this uh, mold, this two half mold here. And then what takes place, there's a gap uh, obviously between between uh, the top and the lower half that's filled by this mat of the shape of this mold. And then what happens is they uh, under fairly at pressure but not high pressure, uh, just gravity really, um, is that it just forces this resin down in here and then impregnates this whole section of this reinforcing mat and it goes from here to here and so and then and then you have um, coils here and these coils are obviously heating this up because it's a thermoset material so any heat is going to solidify that so once this is done then this this turns these heat uh, coils on heats this material up solidifies it and then just separate these two mold as and then you got a very nice uh, conform three-dimensional kind of sculptured part so again it's sort of a combination of very similar to injection molding but obviously um, not using a thermoplastic because most thermo, uh, most composites use a thermoset but be it as it may it also but it but it affords the, the extra reinforcement uh, that you get from using this um, reinforcing mat or fiber preform that goes inside of here so it's a really really good product now I've got some actual samples uh, pictures um, that uh, I was given when I went to a company that uh, did this and uh, here is a, these are aftermarket par products but let me see what that looks like um, okay that's uh, a um, air intake for a four-cylinder uh, vehicle and uh, you can see this is all uh, can uh, carbon fiber and this is all done through this uh, resin transfer molding process and so obviously there can be hollow sections when you do this and again they use this this inflatable bladder to create these hollow sections and then just just deflate that and pull this out of this whole whole piece here uh, but you can also see that it has a possibility of having uh, metallic inserts um, uh, tapped into that and then screwed into that and formed into that. So um, really, really good uh, process. A lot of high-tech applications in the aircraft business um, and in the recreation. Here's a couple of other. Uh, let's see if I get these. Okay, uh, this of course is just a, a nice rim for some sort of bicycle, I would imagine. Um, and this is that same part. Let me move this piece up so you can see a couple more pieces here. Uh, this is a uh, looks like a, a yoke, uh, a front yoke for a motorcycle or something uh, to me, perhaps. Um, but again, these are all excellent, excellent examples of the resin transfer molding process okay and last but not least here we have the wonderful world of pultrusion okay let me check this out okay um, pultrusion um, is, a, is a very interesting uh, process again it's very similar to metal extrusion process that we've already talked about but instead of pushing a product through we're obviously pulling the product through and the the pulling is coming from these these tractor kind of caterpillar type uh, wheels uh, here that are actually pulling this part through uh, and then they use here's a cutoff saw here and usually it's either an abrasive cutoff saw or nowadays now they're using obviously a uh, water jet type uh, cutoff uh, implements to do this with and it all starts back here on the left hand side with again a series of these all these um, yarns in these spools you know lots of them and uh, then they're all brought together and here's these creels they're all brought together in this guide so you know what starts off as a single strand now becomes uh, you know multiple 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 strands uh, together uh, in this in this guide here 
And then it, again, goes through a resin bath or a resin impregnator. All right, and also all this goes through and gets completely wetted out and then starts to go through. Uh, either they have a surfacing material that goes on top of that or sometimes they don't put a surface surfacing mat on top of that. But be that as it may, then it goes into the actual dye. Now this dye is a very long, long dye and it is uh, it has different heat uh, areas. But the the what what usually happens is is that it, let me get a piece of paper here. Uh, what usually happens is that in the beginning of the dye, uh, let's say, let's say you were making uh, a right angle and they make all kinds of, they make all kinds of uh, cross sections, but let's say you're making a right angle. Well, the beginning of this dye, this pre, what they call in the preformer right here, the beginning of it might just look something like this. Okay, because it's trying to gather in all of those, all of those yarns together, and then by the time, by the time it travels, maybe five, maybe ten feet, uh, from here to here, it slowly trans transforms into a more definitive shape like this angle here, and so to start like this at this end, and then end down here with the finished shape with dimensionally accurate uh, sizing. Uh, but again, this is this could be anywhere from five to ten feet long. And again, you saw that in the um, video that that I sent you. Uh, and it slowly pulled out of there. And of course, here is still wet. Uh, but by the time it gets down here, because of the, just like up here where they have the heater coils in there, the copper coils, same thing here, and it starts to heat that up. And the slow as this as two things are happening, as it changes its geometric shape, it's also being solidified by the uh, heat applied by those copper coils. So uh, again, another really interesting uh, process and just so happens I have a sample of a pull truded, um, and of course they do all kinds of standard structural shapes, angles, uh, beams, um, and even hollow sections. And just so happens I have a really nice piece of a hollow section and let me adjust the camera focus. But here is a nice, rectangular tubing as you can see a nice rectangular tubing that is a pull truded product and of course these come in uh standard lengths 10 <clears throat> 10 to 12 feet uh a stock length and then um you know just cut them off uh and are usually using an abrasive type of a cutoff saw to cut these off but they're very very obviously strong very lightweight, very resistant to uh, any kind of corrosion, of course, other than UV, but then they've added uh, UV inhibitors inside this uh, to keep that from happening quite as bad. But uh, a really, really nice uh, product here, okay? And this is, again, a pultruded type of a product from that pultrusion, pultrusion, um, okay, from the pultrusion um process okay so we've gone over the the uh the lion's share of those processes that uh we talked about um earlier in that handout that i sent you we, we went over wet back uh, vacuum bagging went over um wet layup filament winding uh resin transfer molding and pultrusion the only one i didn't go over specifically uh and sort of a, a combination of several of these is the um, automated tape laying um, placement. And there's a really good um, photograph of one of those in, in the slides that I sent you. And it's um, massive, and I've seen these in, in operation myself uh, when I was in Wichita um, out at uh, Boeing. But um, at any rate, they, they are large, massive machines, completely computer controlled, obviously, and they take these tapes, they literally uh, the uh, impre uh, the prepreg tapes, and they could be anywhere from maybe uh, something as as uh, thin as this, you know, uh, or as wide maybe as this. All right, and um, and then it's in the, it's in a, inside the machine in this spool. And then it takes an object, uh, it could take anything, uh, like for instance, this is a good example, if I can bring this out here. Um, 
This this is uh, something that might be on the aircraft. This might be the front section of the aircraft. Well, what this thing does, and this is going to be really rudimentary, but let's say this was the automated tape machine. This is a massive, again, fully articulated six axis. This is this is what we call the mold. Okay, this looks like the shape of the aircraft. So this would come down on a gantry like this, and then it would come and start here and lay this tape down all the way across all the way over on this side and move over and come back all the way across and the whole time it is pressing it down into the mold and, and uh, expertly cutting it off soon it gets to this end and then move it over the right amount and come back over here and it does it precisely it does it very um, obviously a high amount of precision the right amount of force um, and then and then it cuts it off and just keeps moving around but it's fully articulated it can go in any direction all right and then once this whole thing is done, then you can take that and put it in uh, what we call an autoclave. Now an autoclave uh, is something as a curing uh, mechanism. We didn't talk about an autoclave. Um, but an autoclave, autoclave, all right. An autoclave is used in a lot of these processes. Um, in, the, in the automated tape laying machine, of course, uh, the product would go into an autoclave, and definitely in the vacuum bagging would go to an autoclave. Uh, and what that is is just a combination of a furnace and a pressure device. So, um, and, and, and it, so it's like a big oven, but along with the heat, uh, you also get pressure, and pressure is a vacuum pressure that occurs. Uh, and so you can take any of your pieces that you finished molding, like in the vacuum bagging. Um, and I'll show that to you here and in, in, in when I do the next video presentation and show that how it works. Uh, and it just goes into autoclave. You saw some of that on the video as well. But um, when I was uh, up in Wichita, Boeing had just finished building um, the world's second largest autoclave in the world. Um, uh, for primarily because they were obviously uh, building the front nose section of the 787 aircraft in Wichita and that's what they were molding uh, that front section and so it had to and they had to obviously use that that uh, automated tape laying device machine and uh, and then once it once it was done then they they took it off of that mold and uh, moved it over to that autoclave and and that's where all the uh, solidification uh, happened so it's a combination of pressure and heat that completely densifies that product to its ultimate strength, okay? All right, so the next slide will be our cyber lab for vacuum bagging. We'll see you then.